support now from the computers. <laughs> <laughs> they all can't be diamonds. Come on. All right, you're going to like this one, I think. Here's a fact of life. We all like to make fun of the redneck that has seven cars up on blocks in his yard. But but here's here's this guy's thinking. He he doesn't get rid of him because he thinks there's something out there on one of those cars that he's going to need one day, and he doesn't want to get rid of them. And and every single one of us here tonight has some of that in us. Every single person here has got a junk drawer in their house. And I bet I can tell you what is in that junk drawer. An assortment of paper clips and staples, six rubber bands, two marbles, five batteries, you have no idea whether they're good or bad, 12 pizza coupons, which have all expired, a broken garage door opener, two packets of soy sauce, a bunch of cough drops, a tube of glue Superman could not get the top off of, and one lens from a pair of sunglasses. Am I doing okay so far? 37 cents in change, three birthday candles, a locked combination lock you do not know the combination to, a checkbook from a town you lived in 10 years ago, seven keys that go to God knows what, the top part of a flashlight, six business cards from people you do not remember meeting, a picture of somebody's gap tooth kid in a cap and gown, one shoestring, Directions to a coffee maker you no longer own. A bullet. A bullet. An American flag keychain you cannot throw away because to do so would make you feel unpatriotic. Three Tic Tacs, two motel key cards, and a something that either used to be a raisin or a bug. <laughs> We all have that in our house. We've got that in us. That's, that's why we buy storage bins. We, we, do, we pay $1,200 a year to rent a storage bin to hold an $80 bicycle we haven't ridden in a decade. <laughs> it's good business. I might need that bicycle one day. All right, my last fact of life. Thank you for helping me on this new stuff. Um, here's a fact of life. Almost everybody over the age of 50 thinks the world is going to hell in a hand basket. <laughs> you just watch the news, you're like, oh, God. And it's our fault. It's, it, it's our fault. And, and we didn't mean to do this, but as parents, we, we may go down in history as the worst group of parents of all time. <laughs> because we have hovered over our kids so much, we've made them incapable of doing anything. Y'all, we have an entire generation that has no idea how to get dog shit off the bottom of their shoe. <laughs> Why? Because they've never had to do it. A, because we don't let them go outside and play because somebody might kidnap them. And B, because we don't allow dog shit to stay on the ground anymore. We pick it up and put it in a bag. <laughs> but people that are my age know how to do it. It was one of those things you had to have to get by in life. And it was very easy. You got the big clumps off by scraping the shoe on the side of the curb. <laughs> then you would find a, a, a puddle somewhere and swish your foot around. And then go wipe it in the grass. And if you, if you wore kids, you had to find a little bitty stick. <laughs> and pull it out of the little squiggly things on the box. <laughs> Well, because you knew your parents weren't going to buy you another pair of tennis shoes and you'd be wearing those, you know, you didn't want to be Stinky McGee for the rest of your life. <laughs> I have a weird brain, I will admit. And I, and, and I will say this, uh, talking about smarts, um, I am coming up next week, I think it's next week, God, it better be next week. Um, I will have been married for 27 years to uh, the same woman. 
Christianity and, and I have learned so much from this girl uh, over 27 years. But probably the biggest thing I've learned talking about smarts, I have learned beyond a shadow of doubt, women are smarter than men. Uh, it's not really that big a deal. I mean, think about it. What I'm saying is you are smarter than a creature that every time it takes off its underwear, it tries to pick it up with its toes, flip them in the air, and catch them with its hand. Yeah. You're smarter than that. It is a good feeling when you catch them on the first try. Right? Jeez. One of the ways women are so much smarter than men is, is communication. And I've actually studied this. They, they say between the halves of the brain there are communication bridges. And in women, boy, it's like an eight-lane superhighway. And in men, it, it's like a little dirt path. You know, scientists have proven in the course of an average day, the average man uses around 25,000 words. The average woman uses almost 40,000 words. That's 15,000 more words every day than a man. And guys, now that you know this, it should explain why your life's unfolding the way it is. When you come in and you see her and you're like, hey, how was your day? How was my day? Let me tell you, mister, it's been one big zoo around here and I finally had enough. I sent the kids upstairs. I told them I didn't want to see them again until dinner time and I don't know why they're acting this way. When I picked them up at school, we had to go to the mall because little Cindy's been needing new shoes for about three months. Plus her heart, a little pinky toe sticking out of the side of those things. She's going to walk like a duck if we don't do something. Well, I pick them up at school and they start right in on me. Mama, can we go to the library? We've been in the library forever. Mama, can we go to the library? I got to think, well, it's thirsty. We don't have ballet. We don't have soccer practice. Sure, why not swing by the library on the way home? Well, we run in the library and you're never going to believe who we ran into. Sue Hawkins. Remember Sue Hawkins? We sit next to her and her husband, Dan, at the Christmas pageant three years ago. Dan was wearing tan slacks, a green shirt, had a gold stripe in it. You remember that? Anyway, Sue told me that Dan is now working at a new place with a guy named Alan Holman that went to your high school. He wasn't in your grade. Hey, oh, he's like seven, eight years ahead of you. Anyway, this past summer, Alan and his wife Nancy and her mother, and I cannot think of her name to save my life. It's like wanderers on it. It doesn't matter. Anyway, they're all down at Panama City Beach, and they're riding this little paddle boat diggies, and they're not paying attention to what they're doing because the Disney cruise ship's going by. And I've been saying for years, we better do the Disney cruise ship. Kids are going to be grown. They're going to be gone. We're going to regret the fact we never did the Disney cruise ship because you were too cheap to do it. But anyway, her mother's not paying attention to what she was doing, and she got her pinky toe chopped off. Do you believe that? And the man's like, Hungry. Women use more words. Their words don't even mean the same things as men words. So men are confused all the time. Sometimes men and women can say the exact same thing to each other and get totally opposite responses. Like a woman can say to a man, I'm not wearing any underwear. Man's first thought is, all right, I might get lucky. But if a man says to a woman, I'm not wearing any underwear. Her first thought is, oh no. I'm going to have to wash those pants twice. <laughs> and women do this, this thing, it's like code talk. Where y'all will say something that's not what you mean, but you just expect the guy to know. And ladies, you're setting yourself up for heartbreak. <laughs> Not long ago, we're watching TV one night. My wife says to me, or she leaves the bathroom. I mean, she leaves, goes to the bathroom, comes back in a few minutes. She sits down next to me and she says, Well, we're out of toilet paper. <laughs> really? Oh, man. I keep watching TV. <laughs> A few minutes goes by. She said, that's right. There is not one piece of toilet paper in the entire house. That sucks. Keep watching TV. And you know how you can hear somebody getting mad at you. They don't have to say anything, but after a while, you can't hear the TV. All you hear is them breathing. So I turned to her and said, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing. 
Yep. Which means I'll have to keep asking her until she deems me worthy of the answer. <laughs> and isn't that the worst, guys, when you're in trouble and you don't even know what you did? I called a buddy of mine not long ago, and you can always tell when your friends are having an argument by the way they answer the phone, because he's like, hello. I'm like, hey, man, what's going on? Oh, we're having a fight. I said, oh, really, what about? He said, I don't know, she won't tell me. <laughs> I've been locked in the whole bathroom since Thursday. <laughs> Get some potato chips. Come to the window. I'm about to starve in here. <laughs> but going back to my story, I guarantee you every woman here can tell you where I went wrong. Help me out, ladies. When my wife sat down and she said, we're out of toilet paper, what was she really saying? Oh, yeah. Go to the store and get some toilet paper. And guys, why didn't I do it? She didn't ask. That's exactly right. Oh, yeah. If she just sat down and said, hey, will you please go to the store and get some toilet paper? I'd have said, love to dear, be back in 10 minutes. That's not what she said. <laughs> she said, we're out of toilet paper. If a guy sits next to me and says, we're out of toilet paper, I think, hell, he's giving me a warning. <laughs> That we are out of toilet paper, and if you need to go back there, you might want to find a substitute to take with you. <laughs> and I am grateful he has shared this information with me. I have so many friends that would love to leave you hung up in a deal like that. <laughs> hey, Larry! Larry! They will help back here! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeff, I can't hear you. Hey, Larry, I'm about to use your shower curtain. How's your hearing now? <laughs> well, hold on. I think there's some carpet remnants out of the garage. Huh? <laughs> I have learned this after 27 years of marriage. We're not going to be real early. Anywhere we go in our life. <laughs> Gotta learn that. You can have a wife with great looking hair, or you can be on time. But you can't have both. You know, when we get ready to go out, that's the four words I dread the most coming out of her bathroom. I hate my hair! Well, I'll just call and tell them we ain't coming. <laughs> Never do you hear men say, I hate my hair! Because as long as it's still there, we like it. And we're not going to say anything ugly about it that might make it get up and leave. And the older I become, the more I'm convinced men's hair does not actually fall out. I truly believe it just goes back in and comes out other places. <laughs> Follow me down this road just a minute. When I was a little kid, I never had a nose hair. Not one nose hair. Not long ago, I plucked a nose hair and I saw my hairline receive just a little bit. Because they're going back in and they're coming out other places. Like ears. You ever see old men just have ears full of hair? They don't need a hearing aid. They just need a haircut. They're going in and they're coming out somewhere else. And sometimes it's in clumps. Sometimes it's a long, stray solo hair. Like you ever stood in line behind a guy wearing a tank top that had one of those long strays on his shoulder and you're behind him going, holy cow. You think he knows that's there? Look at the length on that thing. You can pull a truck out of a ditch with a hair that long. They're going in and they're coming out somewhere else. Like eyebrows. Lord, by the time men are 60, our eyebrows look like azalea bushes. Cut me, Meg. I can't see nothing. Cut me. <laughs> and women, the older y'all get, the more your eyebrows just disappear. Like everybody has an aunt. You'll see her every year at the family reunion. She doesn't have eyebrows anymore. She just draws them on every morning. Always looks like she's just seen a rat. <laughs> You know what I think might be happening is when we're sleeping, women's eyebrows might be jumping off their face, running across the bed, and joining the men's team. <laughs>
And if men worry about hair, we only worry about the hair that we've got on our head. Women worry about every hair on their body. I remember right after we got married, one day my wife says to me, Oh, i got to get ready for bikini season. Well, to me, that means buying new sunglasses. <laughs> I learned a long time ago, you can move your eyes, do not move your head. <laughs> Wives here, neck muscles creaking. Uh, yep. Nothing more embarrassing than watching a girl walk down the beach in her bikini and end up face to face with your own wife. <laughs> I was just thinking, we should ask her to babysit for us today. Can I go out and have a nice lobster dinner? Maybe I'll buy some new jewelry. You like jewelry, don't you? I buy a lot of jewelry. But I found out what my wife was talking about when she said she had to get ready for bikini season. But she was about to go have a procedure done to her that they call a bikini wax. And to hear her describe this horror, apparently she paid somebody, paid somebody, to pour lava hot scalding wax on her inner thighs. And then the two of them chatted for a little while until the wax had dried. Then the woman grabbed the wax and yanked the hair out. If you ever hear of somebody doing this to me, rest assured there was a gun to my head. Because you yanked the hair out of my inner thigh, I will tell you where my grandmother hides her money. <laughs> Then you have a lady, guys, you ever had your woman take your razor and she'll shave her legs with it, then she'll put that razor back on your counter, you walk in the bathroom, you pick oh. that thing up and you start shaving your face. You can get the bleeding to stop. <laughs> it takes a team and trained professionals, but you can't get the bleeding to stop. I do not know what a woman's leg hair is made out of. <laughs> But you get enough of it together, you could clean a rusty grill with it. <laughs> it is a weird hair. It's, it's got a grain to it. It's kind of like those things in parking lots. Rub it one way, not too bad. Other way, severe tire damage. <laughs> and every married man knows that. Every married man here has had this conversation where he's lying in bed with his wife. Like, hey, baby, you want to fool around? Okay. But I hadn't shaved my legs in five days. <laughs> That's okay, we just wait. <laughs> it's like having sex with a cactus. It's probably like having sex with a cactus. <laughs> don't know that for a fact. And I have all these theories about women, and I'm sure none of them are right. But I have learned women have just as many theories about men. You know the most common theory I've ever heard that women have about men? You've heard it. I've heard it everywhere I've ever been. It goes like this. Well, if he's got big feet, then you know. Or if he's got big hands. Or if he's got a big nose. If he's got big ears. I tell you what, he better be packing because that's one goofy looking guy right there. <laughs> and silly as it is, men worry about this stuff. And ladies, you've actually come up with sayings to reassure us. Oh, honey, it's not the size of the ship, it's the motion of the ocean. Which might be true, but I know it takes a long time to get to England in a rowboat. <laughs> A couple of ladies are right now and down takes a long time. <laughs> and talking about time, that's something else I've learned in 27 years of marriage. Guys, when it comes to romance, do not be in a hurry. Yeah. See, women like to be talked to. And not just stuff like, hey, lay that cardboard down so your dress don't get muddy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that might have been a high school flashback. <laughs> she can't be in a hurry, see, because when it comes to romance, see, women are like diesel engines. And by that, I mean, it might take a little while to get them warmed up. 
But once you do, they can run a long, long time. Whereas men, on the other hand, see, men are more like bottle rockets. about being over 50 and, and I mean this sincerely what one of the coolest things about this job I never I never had been anywhere in my life until I started doing comedy and because of comedy I've been to all 50 states been to every part of all 50 states and 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 I've been very blessed in that I've gotten to do a lot of different things whether it was calendars or books or whatever but if, but if you ever put a gun to my head and you said you can't do but one thing this would be it I, I love doing this and <laughs> Because it's like sometimes you, you don't know if it's just you and your crazy family. And then I come out here and I say it and I see y'all go. <laughs> oh, thank God it's not just us. All right. <laughs> but, but, but you've allowed me to, to, to make a great living doing something I would have done for free. I hate to tell them that. But, uh, thank you. And I, and I know... Uh, Man, I know, I know the economy's tight and, and entertainment dollars are kind of hard to find. I hope you had a good time tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, sometimes you just got to, I always say laughter is that release valve that keeps the boiler from exploding. Sometimes you just got to laugh a little bit. But, but nah, we, we, we will end that way. We will, uh, I couldn't come all the way out here without doing one or two ways on how to tell how you might be a redneck. So, uh, Oh, and by the way, if you're gambling tonight, they've already paid me, so take every dime they got. Right? <laughs> if you have a complete set of salad bowls and they all say Cool Whip on the side, <laughs> you might be a redneck. I've seen that in a long time. If you take your dog for a walk and you both use the tree at the corner, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If an episode of Walker Texas Ranger changed your life, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you keep a fly swatter on the front seat of the car so you can reach your kids in the back seat, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If your working television sits on top of your non-working television, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you've ever been accused of lying through your tooth, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If you think a 401k is your mother-in-law's bra size, <laughs> you might be a redneck. If your son's name is Dale Jr., <laughs> and your name's not Dale, <laughs> You might be a redneck. If you work without a shirt on, and so does your husband, you might be a redneck. If your neighbors think you're a detective because a cop always brings you home, you might be a redneck. If you ever empty the bed of your pickup truck by driving backwards really fast and slamming on the brake, you might be a redneck. If you think fast food is hitting a deer at 65 miles an hour, 
You might be a redneck. If somebody tells you you have something in your teeth and you take them out to see what it is, you might be a redneck. If you ever stared at a can of orange juice because it said concentrate, you might be a redneck. If somebody hollers hoedown and your girlfriend hits the floor, you might be a redneck. God bless you. Be safe. Thank you so much, y'all. Thank you.